Yeah. Whoop whoop. Tom, how are you feeling? Your album's out this week, 12th. Yes, it's taken a long time, but it's finally out, yeah. How long has it taken? God. Um, fuck. Probably all my life, but no, it's, it's, it's 10 years. It's been a 10 year slog of, yeah. There's one song on the album that you wrote 10 years ago. There's, there is. There are nine, nine songs. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote the whole album 10 yeah, years ago. I just went, you know what, I'm going to sack it off for a decade. I'm just going to release it now. But um, there's actually, yeah, there's one song that is, I think, nine or eight years old. Yeah. You must be nervous. Uh, no, I'm not actually that nervous. I'm quite excited. It was, it feels like the right time for me to release an album. Like I did seven EPs in two years. And I was kind of a bit like, once I'd done the seventh EP, I was like, I think I was, that's enough. Like, yeah. You know, I think it's time for an album. So I've, you know, I put a lot of thought into the track listing and, you know, the kind of what songs, you know, I think I wrote about 30 or 40 songs for the record and whittled it down to like 13. How hard was that? It was, it was easy because the, you know, I, I def, I've, I'd like to think that the record isn't just one thing. So I was writing a varied stuff. Um, I didn't want it to, to be too much about love or too much about getting dumped or, you That's know. What I read in my notes. Yeah. It's largely just when you were happy or sad yeah. relating to um, whether you've been dumped or not. There is, yeah. Well, through it, a lot of relationships. It is, uh, yeah. I'm not, I, you, get I'm dumped, not, you get dumped a lot. I am. I'm not lucky with love, you know, but uh, I'm, I'm still like a hopeless romantic. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Getting dumped is great because it gives you all your creative juices. Yeah, and it's net profit after that as well. With the <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> But, um, you know, I, I did enjoy making the record and I'm very proud of it. So I'm kind of just excited to get it out there. And I think I think people will like it. Well, hopefully, you know. I'm sure they will. More, I than, did. My, more than my mum will like it, yeah. Is it eight years ago? You were, is, it, uh, is it Leaper? Le 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 oh, you got me out uh, It's Lipper. Yeah. Lipper. Yeah. 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 Eight, the, eight years ago? Yeah. Uh, yeah, eight, eight or nine years ago, yeah. Do you win Songwriter of the Year up there or something? Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't sell that short to me. What does that, what does that uh, mean? I basically got a one-on-one -on -one with uh, Paul, Paul McCartney. So we That's the prize? Yeah. Oh, well, I, I got a cash prize as well. But, uh, and that was the prize. I'd say the prize was Paul, yeah. Yes. Um, but I'm a huge Beatles fan. And um, yeah, we sang, I think it was six songs of mine together. And we just had a chat and he was great. So you sent him the song. He gets the songs No, no, we, we, it was just like this. And you didn't know your songs before you no, went to No, 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 no. I just came with my guitar. I started playing some songs. I said to him before I sang the first, I sang the first line, I stopped and I went, wow, this is weird, isn't it? It's you, you're Paul McCartney. And he was like, yeah. And then, uh, then I started up again and he, was, he sang the first line back at me like a cheeky bugger. Yeah. But um, he was great. He was so much fun. I think, you know, he was in his 70s when we did that. And he was just dancing and jumping around. And An extraordinary man, isn't Full he? of life. Was it the Beatles that made you pick up the guitar? And how yeah. old were you when that The happened? Beatles, Simon and Garfunkel, uh, Bob Dylan. Okay. Yeah. I was like... Through your parents? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My mum. Yeah. Her, the cassettes in the car. Mm. And then my sister's ex-ex-ex-ex-ex boyfriend uh, made me a compilation CD, a uh, tape, sorry, cassette of um, like Oasis, Supergrass. Ash and that kind of. She should have stayed with him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, Maybe the reason they're still <laughs> not together is because he made you the compilation. Yeah. Tape. So um, <laughs> yeah. But um, it was great. I th I wanted to be Liam Gallagher. I used to practice the stance in the mirror. Um, but yeah. But that doesn't. I mean, I've seen you play now. That doesn't. No, I, I shook that off quite. Yeah. yeah I realised that I'm definitely not Liam Gallagher. So. Who did you see? Who's the first person you saw live where you were you, you were sort of mesmerised? Damien Rice and right. Lisa Hannigan. Yeah. And that's why I've got girl vocals on the record. Sure. And, you know, I was lucky to get Lisa as well to write some songs with her on, on the album as well. What's your work ethic like? You, you, do, you, do, you write, do you write all the time? Yeah, I'm pretty relentless, yeah. yeah. Well, and what, what time of the day do you like? Night time. What time, the, what time would you start writing? Oh, I, do you know, I tend to write when I'm watching TV because I normally get bored by watching it and then um, I start writing a song. But, you know, I try, I try and write about three songs a week. Yeah. That's yeah, terrific. we've got you. You know, I've got, I've got, I've got. A, when you've done seven EPs and, and uh, an album in like three years, you know, you've got to keep it, keep it going. And I'm already writing my second album at the minute. Hey, what time of night? Do you, what, your, what's your favourite time to write? One o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then how long will you stay up till? 
three. That's probably why I'm single. And then when do you wake <laughs> up? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, depends what we've got on the next day. You're such a musician, aren't you? That's no, I'm. Not, I've. Tr- I was up early for you. I know. That's it. Because I'm up early. Yeah, I was listening to it on the radio. I was there. And, and are you? By the sounds of it, you aren't. Are you? Are you good at? when you do put it to bed to just go like do you work with the producer or do you produce yourself no no I've we worked with a guy called Chris Bond who did both Ben Howard albums and he it's as much his album as it is mine you know he did he plays 70% of the instruments on it and he's crucial to what it is will he play live with you no no I try to get him out of his studio but he won't come out you know he loves it in Devon he doesn't doesn't really want to leave. And as a producer, would you, would he, uh, is he well placed to say we've done it now? We've got to put it to bed. No, he's worse than me. Oh God. Yeah. No wonder, he, no wonder it like, took nine years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's worse than me. He's, he's, he's like, I've got another version of the song. And it'd be like, he'll take out all the guitars and it'll be just piano. I'll be like, okay. But this is like the fifth version. And I'll be like, okay, what are we going with? Mm. Um, but he, I like that about him because he, he really cares. It shows that like he's passionate about the project. Well, uh, what's it like to be, uh, uh, um, indulge me here, what's it like to be a rising star, someone that's doing well for themselves in the modern era of mm. music, in the modern era of music that doesn't involve signing with a major label, doing a tour, doing an album, doing a tour, doing an album. Uh, and I mean that both in, in and I don't want to know specifics, but financially, like the model is a lot different now to how it's yeah. to the traditional model. You know, you're your own boss. You've got the wonderful world from its good and its ills and social media to, to sort of contend with. What's yeah. Th- yeah, how does the world? How does that world exist now? I think it's pretty liberating because I'm not. You know, I'm not. I'm. You know, for the first couple of years, we were just desperate for a major label to sign us, and now with things like Spotify. I can release my own music and, mm. you know, let the people judge whether it's good enough or, you know, if it's not good enough. It strikes me that, so that you could put your stuff out there and unless you're marketed in the right way, yeah. it can just disappear in the wind. So how do you, how do you ensure that doesn't happen? Gig. We, did, we do about, try and do about 100 gigs a year. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that if you do get a s- source of income, try and employ like a team of people really you have to kind of be your own record label um but you That's know exciting. it is it's liberating you know we released three eps before we had an independent record contract offered to us and at that point we were playlisted on radio two we had five hundred thousand monthly listeners uh we were selling out shows around the country like you know that was down to kind of you know, word of mouth, really, mm. and, and uh, you know, things like Spotify supporting us. So, yeah, I think it is, it's just, you've got to be a bit, maybe a bit more patient these days. And that's maybe not a bad thing as well, because you appreciate it more when it does happen. Sure. And the great thing about online is it's not, you know, you're not confined to your locale. So, you, you know, we were just talking before we started, just got back from Brazil. Yeah. I'm an international pop star. What's it like? <laughs> what's it like? What's it like? What's it like? Um, How was playing in Brazil? Crazy. They knew all the words. One of your Pop tunes show. used over there in a TV show, or no, no, it went to number one in just the, r- in the viral charts on Spotify. Yeah, <laughs> and it was I can't really I can't still can't really get my head around it. And we're playlisted on radio out there, and yeah, it's pretty pretty bonkers. Why Brazil? How did that? Brazil I don't know. I, on, I I kept on asking them. I was like, why? Why, why, why are we <laughs> First here? thing you say. Yeah, but they were like, we love melodies. That's all they could ever say to me. You know, my Portuguese is awful. And you're like, I've got a lot more melodies here. Yeah. Okay, so in terms of, uh, you know, like, like you said, while the album's taken so long, it was a lot down to health issues. Do you, so with the Crohn's, when did that, when did that happen? When did it rear itself? About 10 years ago. Yeah, and it's just been... And what is it, lethargy or... Like oh, God, it's everything. It's fatigue. It's that's, what, but that's how you manifest yourself to start with. How are you feeling? Well, it was... God, I won't go too graphic, but... Sure. It, Put it this way, the toilet was my friend. Yeah. Um, well, I've got a few friends with it, all, yeah. with, all with bowel issues, and it's just... It's so up and down. Like, I was in, I've been in hospital five or six times for lengthy periods, you know. While, the, while we made the album, it was two months. So the third yeah. week, 
I was in from from we started the record because okay. you get infections. I perforated my bowel right. on that one, um, and yeah, it's a f you start with a flare up and it just it's like it's like a volcano waiting to erupt. Yeah, poor thing. Yeah. So. Uh, so what have you learned from that? How do you live your life now differently? Uh, as I said, I'm like the least rock and roll person ever, but I would say there is there's a silver lining in the sense of that I enjoy things more yeah. than I don't take things for granted. <laughs> disease but um, it's not gonna well hopefully it won't kill me and it, awesome. you know it's making me stronger as a person uh, yeah and it's good it's up to you whether you want to talk about it but I think it's always good for these things to be put out into the open yeah. so that so there's no stigma attached to them I know if when I got diagnosed it'd be cool to know that there was other musicians out there you know battling with it but also having a career mm. um, so I think I'm not afraid or you know I don't no. think there's a stigma for me to not talk about it Okay, so what's, what's, the, what's the rest of 2019 held? You're doing Glastonbury this we year? We are doing Glastonbury, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. This will be your first Glastonbury? Yeah. And I'm not a fan of festivals, and I don't like mud, but I'll, I'll definitely... Why don't you like festivals? God, it's, it's, not, good, it's, not, it's not good for the clothes, is it? <laughs> I, thought you were about to talk about, I thought you were about to talk about Crohn's. Or yeah. Like, yeah, I was being really respectful. No, no. Just, it's not good for your clothes. Yeah, well, no, I don't want to wear wellies. You, you can do festival chic. Easy. No. Yeah, stylish uh, guy. Camping. You have to camp. Nah. Yeah, Glastonbury, I'll do it, yeah. And what else? Um, obviously, the album comes out. We're doing a big UK tour, a big European tour. Uh, we're doing a bit of TV, a bit of Radio 2 performances. It's, it's, I think it's going to be busy. And then when... Will you give that a rest afterwards? Or will you... Will you no, you yeah, said you will I stuff. think it depends how well the album goes. But I would want to start making the next record probably around... March next year or something. So I'm gonna have a bit of time off, maybe around Christmas. Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. Well, see how it goes. it's going well for you. Oh, thanks so much. Thanks, man. Good talk.